Welcome back to Dubai Works Business Podcast. This week we're joined by G2 Kataria, the CEO and co-founder of DIFX. They are a one-stop solution for businesses and traders. They provide a seamless platform to carry out crypto transactions. So fintech, crypto trading, this is going to be a real deep dive conversation this morning. We'll be talking about how the company was formed a couple of years ago, uh, the category, the industry, and really what's happening in Dubai in this space. Good morning, G2. Good morning. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for inviting me. So tell us a little bit more about DIFX. Uh, so DIFX is a, it's a digital financial exchange. It's a cross-asset exchange. Uh, we are trying to bridge a gap between uh, the traditional users and the crypto users. What our belief, our belief is basically crypto should have a mass adoption. And for mass adoption, you need a bridge between the traditional assets and the cryptocurrencies. So you need a mix and match of both. If you need a mass adoption, if, if I look at the current user base of the industry, crypto industry, it is uh, roughly between 150 to 200 million users. But uh, if you look at the traditional assets uh, like commodities, forex stocks, we have roughly 1.5 to 2 billion users today. So we feel that if cryptocurrency needs to have a mass adoption, you need to bridge a gap between these asset classes. Mm. That's what we are trying to do in DIFX. We are mm. a cross-asset exchange wherein mm. we allow users to not only trade on cryptos, but you can trade on traditional assets also along with your crypto assets. Okay, interesting. That's so so interesting to describe because yes, when people trade crypto, they do it on different exchanges and it's very siloed and separate from uh, from traditional trading or investing. Yes. So was that the thesis of DIFX? Is, and how did the, the name obviously is very similar to DIFC. Is there any kind of association uh, there? Uh, there is no association of DIFX with DIFC. What does DIFX it stand for? is Digital Financial Exchange. Yeah. We have copyrighted this across the globe. Uh, yes, I know that DIFX was Dubai International Financial Exchange, which was taken over by NASDAQ Dubai. Yeah. But for us, DIFX stands for Digital Financial Exchange. Yeah. And there is no association with uh, DIFX the Dubai financial or markets. any Dubai financial markets at okay. all. We are based here in Dubai, our tech team based here. We have a tech company over here. Our operations are run, our tech operations are run from Dubai itself. Okay, and so you, yeah, so you did set the business up here. Uh, when did you set it up and sort of what's your journey been like? Uh, I have been uh, based in Dubai since last 12 years. So I have been working in different sectors. I'm a hedge fund trader by myself. I okay. have a venture capitalist. We are investing into startups. And uh, we started the first inception of the company of DIFX back in 2019. Uh, this was back in Singapore. And then we formed a tech company in Dubai to start the operations. So since last one and a half year, we are based in Dubai as a tech company. And then we have a different global resolution, uh, regulations. We are based in Cayman Islands, we are based in Singapore, we are based in UK. So in cryptocurrency, you can't uh, have one single company. There are regulations in different parts of the world. And you don't know which country will change the regulations overnight. So it's always better for you to have uh, licenses from different parts of the world when you are running a crypto exchange. And we are into both. We are into cryptos and we are into CFDs also. Okay. So our vision is that over next one year, we will go in multiple locations as a regulations uh, and we will get licenses from that. But Dubai will be our core hub wherein my tech operations are concerned, I think looking at the Cosmo culture of Dubai, mm. it's very easy for me to build a team over here and uh, get all the resources I need. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen uh, in last five years any, any city transforming the way Dubai has transformed well, with, yeah. with, in terms of getting the resources, calling the people and no matter where you stay, uh, you might be in UK, US, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, wherever you stay. But when you come to this city, I think it's home away from home. Mm. So that's what Cosmo culture we have over here. And it's very easy for me to get the resources from across the globe, call them over here and let them work in our office. Wow. So um, just going back to from a consumer point of view, I think obviously having options to do things in one place makes sense. So if I open up an app or register an account yeah. and I want to buy Tesla or I want to buy Bitcoin, yeah. I can do it in the same place. Absolutely. So that's what uh, my I, I have been trading since so many years and uh, 
that's what problems i have faced uh, in in last 5 years that switching between the different platform is the real pain we have if you want to buy crypto then you need to go on a crypto exchange if you need to switch from bitcoin and you need to buy gold future you need to go on a different cfd platform so that's what were the problems i was facing uh, but it's not simple to do because what so we, you talked about so where you regulated you know if you're setting up a platform like a bank or something that you someone can trade on what's the sort of language you talk about who do you who do you approach in dubai in difc and what sort of license do you get if you're just setting up a an investment trading platform and then what's the difference to adding the crypto piece okay so basically in dubai as of now there are recently dmcc has announced the regulations where we have filed the application they have came out with the whole law in sync with cbvc labs wherein they have set it up a crypto center okay so Now, this is a free zone this is one of the free zones dmcc is one of the free yeah, zones where they are coming zone. out with full fledged regulations i think uh, i have This is what I saw last year in World Economic Forum. Uh, there was an announcement that Dubai, in coming five years, will be the blockchain capital of the world. I think whatever says whatever they told in that conference, I have seen that changes in last one year. Uh, in uh, the crypto center in DMCC opened up, I think three three and a half months back. This was when His Highness Sheikh Hamdan went to Davos. Yes, and Davos, talked and about, he spoke that yeah. uh, we will be the blockchain center of uh, the world. This yeah. is what the vision is. and this is i think to for any country to grow they need uh, the technology which is adapting at a different pace i haven't seen in last uh, 10 years of my career that any industry growing from a 200 billion dollar industry to today it's 3 trillion dollar industry yeah so that's what that's uh, an announcement this week right that's that's what the blessing in disguise pandemic uh, yeah. lots of people were affected and uh, they were sitting home and they felt that this is this is the need of our they started trading on different assets they started trading on crypto and because of the volatility you get more and more traders which come and which trade mm. so that's what the adaptability uh, crypto industry had in last one year and this industry has grown to next level mm. there are n number of uh, project which didn't went up so it's it's mix and match but overall the industry has grown at a different level there are not only cryptocurrency but overall blockchain industry is growing there is there are different oil and gas industries or petroleum uh, fmcgs pharma they all are using blockchain technology today so that's what the adaptability is of this industry and whichever country is adapting i think in coming 5 years they will be the leaders and okay. dubai has shown that in last they don't speak but they believe in the action so in last i think 3 months there are more than 500 companies who have came in only dmcc and registered i think this is at the pace what they are going uh, this is what pace i have seen in zug in 2013 in crypto valley and right now they're growing at a different where did pace. you say so this is in zug switzerland okay so in 2000 the first regulated country uh, was switzerland in zug they were the one who came out with the regulations and after that it was followed by different countries like lithuania estonia and all So, so you think UAE is at that stage now? I think so. The way they are going, uh, UAE is at that stage, and uh, not only DMCC but DIFC has announced that they will be coming out with their laws. Yeah. Uh, World Trade Center Free Zone have came out that they will be announcing a law which will be related to blockchain and security tokens and all. So we see uh, the changes which are happening in this city okay. and, and with specific free zones. there will be ease of doing business in related to blockchain and uh, cryptocurrencies okay but i assume that the, you know this is a commodities free zone there aren't any banks registered in dmcc there are in difc and there's trading platforms and there's exchanges yes. so how do you, you know you, you've decided to put things together for the user yeah. has has regulation decided that these are the same things so basically to run a, a crypto exchange it's an online portal you just have to be regulated from a specific uh, location and you can run it to with specific countries so okay. in dubai we are we are a tech operations but we are a global platform we are an online platform wherein across the globe we are allowing users to come and trade Fair enough. and they can do their business okay so but, you could be regulated uh, the original license for the trading part of crypto could be in singapore yeah. your tech team can be here and in the future when the when the licenses are available here for more crypto license you can from that you can add to the country so that's what we have applied uh, in and dmcc yeah 
we'll see what are the regulations of DIFC will apply there okay. also. So that's what our vision Fly is. Everywhere. So, yeah, absolutely. In, <laughs> the, in the this flow. industry, yeah. you need to go with the flow. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So uh, continuing on that theme, if I trade or anyone, I was fascinated by the numbers you mentioned, the 1.5 billion versus the 100, 100 million, 150 million. I haven't heard those numbers before. I heard 40 million crypto traders, but I didn't hear that size was interesting in context. But when someone trades, uh, when someone makes an investment in, in the public markets, they're, uh, you know, they open and close at different times, time zones, whereas, whereas crypto is open all the time. Yeah. How does, is, you know, if you're mixing these things together, yeah. what does it look like on the dashboard? Like, are you, are you still kind of going to different places within your system yeah so basically uh, from monday to friday you have the traditional markets which are open and along with that along with the we have two platforms so one is the spot exchange platform and next is the mt5 platform on the mt5 we have more this than, is your proprietary named platform whereas the spot exchange can be on other yeah spot exchange is our own institutional a, platform yeah. and then there is a company named metacoach yeah and 75 percent of the volumes across the globe on the traditional happen or uh, traditional assets happen on mt5 platform okay so we have one platform okay. so we we, but we just want to create a bridge because there are n number of traditional users who are using a platform from last 15 years and they are used to on that platform. You can't shift them from one platform to another if no matter how good your product is. Mm. So we bought both the platform, we created our own spot platform, simultaneously we have a traditional platform but on this traditional platform MT5. We have all the crypto assets also which are trading. We have more than 600 assets. Hmm. This is just an MVP went live. We just went live three weeks back on the MVP. But in coming six months, we'll have all the products wherein we will have social trading. We'll have n number of things coming up. We are building our own blockchain which will be going live in coming six months. So there are n number of products which are coming. You have your own token as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Yeah. We have our own. It's a utility token which works in the ecosystem of uh, DIFX exchange. So mm. it's, it's basically to pay your fees, you can use this token. So mm. it's a utility token just like any other exchange token like BNB, FTX and so on. Yeah, interesting. So that, that sits within your system. So. I guess one of the, you talked about onboarding everything and then you mentioned one of the reasons people wouldn't change to a platform, but obviously having uh, access to all the different uh, markets and all the different, uh, in, uh, what would we call them, uh, securities and assets and things like that. Yeah. Um, adding everything in one place is, it takes a long time and is hard. Absolutely. It took us uh, almost uh, one and a half year to build this bridge. Uh, and. Uh, my real problem while trading uh, on all these platforms, well, there are some platforms which are good, they are insured, but their maximum of the platform, they use their own wallets. Your assets are not secured. There are hacks happening because this is a tech, anything can happen. So on day one, we were clear that whenever we come out with our platform, we need to secure our user. That's what the utmost priority is. We onboarded one of the best KYC and AML uh, platform, which is available right now, that's some in substance. At the back end of our exchange, we have Fireblock, uh, which is one of the largest custodians in the world today. They have more than $500 billion assets under custody. So they are the one who are maintaining all the assets of our users, including us. Mm. And the wallets are insured. So whoever is holding any, any asset on that wallet, that's been insured uh, by okay. them. So that's how we have a platform. We are providing the platform where you can trade. But at the back end, it's a robust system of KYC, AML chain analysis wherein we are doing whole blockchain analysis whenever any asset comes we need to take care that these assets are not tumbled or marked anywhere mm. or it is any any hacker who is putting their assets in our platform so mm. that's what we have worked in this last one and a half year along with the regulations and different companies across the globe okay so interesting and i, I saw on your website I, I know we're skipping ahead but it mentioned an eventual ipo as well a kind of roadmap to that we have three years down the line we might go for an ipo for, uh, initially we need to just focus yeah. on the uh, platform and, okay. and user acquisitions so our focused markets right now uh, are asia africa and middle east so these are i personally feel that you have the maximum population in these region and till now, uh, there is no adaptability of our industry in these regions. If you can focus, you can get, some, get a mass adoption. Europe, US, Japan and, and Southeast Asia, they are mature enough uh, on, on these assets and crypto trading. 
but this region especially africa middle east these are new to this industry it's just one year because of the hype they are coming on board but you need to educate them well uh, just for that region we have uh, difx academy which is free for all we educate to the users that while you choose the platform what you need to see while you trade what are the risk management systems you need to follow while you are trading because cryptocurrency is a volatile asset so everything we have a detailed academy along with a very simplified videos and we have the whole ebooks available for every users to read it in a different multi language yeah you can you have to provide that information and uh, knowledge to people to help them so it's a good partner in that way interesting the reason I was asking about the IPO is you know coinbase went public and people were saying okay that's a wallet but it's not necessarily decentralized yet it's trading crypto uh, so you know because the promise of some of the exchanges is that they're decentralized um, yet yours can't be because it's also we are a centralized exchange we are not decentralized yeah we are because ultimately if you want to create a mass adoption today I told you that if you see the traditional assets like commodities commodities is having a volume of 900 billion dollars a day if you look at the currencies forex uh, currencies trading volume it's more than seven to eight trillion dollars a day daily trade volumes stock futures CFDs options they have massive volumes but if you look at the cryptocurrency trading volumes today, it's roughly between $300 billion a day. So if you want that adaptability and that mass adoption that you have $1 trillion to $2 trillion volume a day, you need to bridge these assets with cryptocurrencies. Only mm. then I think you will get the real users who want to trade both the assets with combination. Okay, interesting. I'm sold. I understand it. I think top line. Ali, the producer, is laughing. <laughs> but so so interesting. So talking a little bit more about the tech side, uh, when your tech team are in Dubai, which is really interesting, and you explained why that you can have access to different uh, diversity, different people, different skill sets, different background. But when you're coding for the blockchain, uh, what are you look? How how do you know if someone's a blockchain developer? What languages do they have and what sort of background do they have? So they have the experience, they do blockchain courses. There are n number of universities available right now. We have our CTO who have studied in India and, and he's been working, he's having 10 years of experience into blockchain. He was with one of the largest organizations here and he have joined us uh, to, to come in as a CTO. What, so langu what language, like if you have a web developer and they do PHP or whatever, what are, you know, so what sort of, what is someone doing on the blockchain? So normally we do Solidity which is on Ethereum. So there okay. are different different blockchains. So what experience they have. There are n number of blockchains available. The, the most advanced one right now is Etherchain with the maximum community. And once any, any blockchain developer who knows Solidity well, I think he can build different blockchains and he can build product on different blockchains once he knows because he's working on that. One, which is one of the oldest one. Mm. So we normally look for that kind of people. Apart from that, there are different, so you don't only need blockchain developers, but you need different kind of uh, skill set. You need yeah. your UI, UX, you need a Node.js uh, developer, you need full stack developer, you need DevOps. So there are different so kind the, of people yeah. and you need a proper team. So you have one or two blockchain developers and then you have a different team in sync. They can work together. So when you're doing something like you are, which is not just the blockchain part, you need all the the main web developers. Absolutely. And then, based on what you believe fits your product, you will choose one of the chains or the nodes or one of the. It's like when you're building a website originally, or what sort of codes do you want to use, Absolutely. right? And then you 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 choose that. So you've you've chosen the absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So we are roughly right now we have we are a team of fifty five people. Okay. Out of which uh, roughly twenty five people sits in Dubai, and then we are in the remote locations in Sri Lanka, India, Russia. But now our expansion plan is over next one year we'll get all the team. So we are expanding to one hundred and fifty people now, mm. and our whole team will be based in uh, Dubai. Looking looking That's at the cool. scale, we want all the team members to be working in sync to get the real output we need yeah. and this is what we plan. That's interesting because a lot of people especially in the crypto space you know believe in kind of remote working and things like that and obviously you built a lot of this business during the pandemic but even still not just does Dubai offer a sort of a, a good base for crypto uh, but it's also 
you actually want people in the same place to work together. Absolutely. We believe that team building is very important and uh, putting your team in the remote locations, you don't have that bond which, which creates the real product you want. They can work uh, from the remote locations, but it's very important for them to meet be in sync with each other to create a different product what what is needed interesting and where so talking about your your offices and your space in dubai are you did you take an office in difc or where are you no we are uh, we have a company over here which is in mainland dubai it's a tech company okay and now we are filing in dmcc and difc both. okay interesting yeah. and uh building a tech platform in the financial space uh what sort of investment was needed and what stage are you at so I think uh, it depends on what is your product. Each and every product has a different price tag. But yeah, we have invested a lot, I think. Um, but so, so in 2019, did you sort of, did you put in sort of uh, like angel round? Did you put in cash at the start? No, uh, it, it was a self-funded project. Okay. We haven't raised any, any funds uh, for the project. It was a self-funded project. You we and your co-founder. Absolutely, we yeah. and our co-founder. It was a self-funded project, and we, we as a venture capitalist, we, there were some tech companies which we funded at the initial period. Yeah, and we brought in all the tech companies and our own team. They went in sync and they started the development. Okay. So it was a self-funded project. It was we haven't raised any funds on the equity level. Okay. Even our token is listed right now. It is open, and it's it's uh, basically the token is registered in Cayman Islands as a virtual asset company. And uh, it is a ecosystem proje project. It is not a, a currency or cryptocurrency where you can use it outside. It is used in the ecosystem of the exchange wherein a user, when they trade, they can uh, have these tokens with them. And if they are trading, for example, they bought a Bitcoin with a million dollar and they need to pay hundred dollars as a commission on that. If they have the IFX token, they get up to 50% discount on their commission. So okay. the whole ecosystem, the token works on the whole ecosystem. Okay, so they're it's a utility to, token to use uh, your own utility token. Absolutely. And what? So interesting. So so basically, like even if you're not making money right now, you still have a runway for those 150 staff. Absolutely. Okay. We, we are. So, that's, so you've that's, done well in the investment world. Absolutely. We <laughs> have been working on, on the investment and venture capital companies yeah. since last so many years. So that yeah. was our vision that let, let the product speak for itself. Okay. The users, when they feel secure, they will come in. I have seen lots and lots of product. We are building lots of products which to safeguard the users. Yeah. So I okay. think in, in coming six months, you will see what are the products we are bringing and what how secured user will feel when they come on DIFX platform to trade. Interesting. And what about, uh, what, ab uh, uh, lost my thought. what about Dubai at the moment? I was at the cricket recently and I saw FTX branding around the place. There's a blockchain summit. Uh, there's Floki ads at the airport. It just feels like we're in crypto land. I think in <laughs> last uh, one year, I think that's the vision and, and dedication of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum and his team. Uh, they have shown even in, in the worst time of pandemic wherein the whole world is not working, Dubai was on and the business was working. We had, even at the time of pandemic, there was one of the largest conferences which happened. Future Blockchain Summit was your AIBC Summit, Crypto Summit. Again, the Future Blockchain Summit happened with four other conferences and Jitex. So we have seen uh, how to do business even in the tough times and that's that's the vision of, of His Highness uh, brought in all the people across the globe to come to Dubai and work. I think we have seen some of the biggest groups coming to Dubai, setting up their offices, setting up their, applying for the licenses. It's only because of the reason in the last one year what Dubai has shown to the world. And, and so, Jitu, if you're at one of these events and you're meeting people from around the world who might just be coming, you know, to meet people, what's the, their reaction? Are they kind of saying, oh, wow, like, all oh, you guys are here, we should be here. Is there a bit of a FOMO? What, like, what's the pull? We know the pull for tourism is to come to Dubai, but what's the pull for kind of crypto people around the world to be here? I think uh, you tell me which other country or which other city you have seen in the last so many years wherein you have people from more than 200 countries staying in one place, 90% yeah. expats from across the globe in a single city working. Which which other city is there in the world? Probably not. Such a <laughs> so that's, that's yeah. you speak for that. The, the volume speak for itself, the way, way they are doing, the Cosmo culture you have in Dubai, I think yeah. no matter where the person is from, when he comes to Europe, he, he feels that he's in his home. Yeah. Because he meet 
his own community you have each and every community available in Dubai staying in peace okay so so it's more from a kind of um i feel like i can work from here in safety rather Absolutely. than a hey this is like El Salvador who has you know the prime minister is really uh, buying crypto with state money and things like that there hasn't been a sort of other than that speech and that sort of strategy there isn't a catalyst that says hey this is really different like you know they they haven't say released a digital currency they haven't sort of really uh changed the kind of central bank here yet have they no not yet and they haven't changed yet I, i don't think so that might be coming over a period of time yeah. it'll take some time but i think the adaptability will be there over a period of 5 10 years and what would you expect in in that level like from a, a you know from a fiat currency versus other currencies from a government point of view do do you think the digital currencies you know that they 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 will make their own currency like a or, I think or will uh, they adopt a, a a crypto asset I feel so every country will have their own digital currency but it will be the legal tender what they will come out with China has came out with and now Australia is planning so there are in number of countries who will come out with their digital currencies but it will not affect the usability of the cryptocurrencies okay. and bitcoin ether and so on so every integrated. project is different every blockchain is different and usability is different so okay everybody will have its own market but it will not uh, counter so there are small countries who might announce that bitcoin will be the legal tender but mm. the large one will have their own digital uh, currency as the legal tender yeah interesting uh, the year has flown by we sat here in the studio and interviewed uh, a guy called Matthias Mende who's uh, in, an investor in in Dubai in, in crypto space and he recommended to me to invest in polkadot solano and things like that and that was a year ago and the prices are like uh, solana was a dollar then it's 200 and something now and so what what have you kind of like other than you know the excitement of day traders and things like that how do you rationalize what's happened in the last 12 months like we we see the meme coins we see what you know obviously bitcoins uh kind of 10x as well in that period how do you rationalize that or, or is your head down building a tech product and you're kind of outside of it uh look i personally feel when you invest in a project it's very important to see what is the usability and the utility of that product what is the product they are building and will it have a mass adoption today if he spoke about dot he spoke about solana so the project is having a mass adoption why because it's a blockchain if you look at the top 20 or top 30 tokens available right now with the largest market cap each and every 80% are based on the blockchain wherein you use these blockchain you build different product and you need to it's use it's an infrastructure their, there it's an infrastructure which is there and you need to use their token to basically build your product or do transactions yeah so it totally depends when you invest on the project which are the good one there are n number of good projects which are coming up in pipeline there are on the ico calendars on different launch pads it's important to study on that project what will be the usability yeah and i personally feel i i i as an investor i do an sip so every month i have a set amount which i put on the top 5 coins so no mm. matter what the price is i see the industry 10x from here in maybe 5 years mm. so even even it's never the late uh, if there are new investor even they can segregate certain portfolio if they haven't invested anything it's better to go with the topmost one segregate your portfolio maybe 20% of your existing portfolio you put into cryptos and out of that 50% go in the top 5 and rest 50% you keep it with the new tokens which are coming which have good usability okay this isn't that financial advice but it's good to get your insight Absolutely. because this is the, yeah because you know it's hard to understand everything but it's it's good for people to understand which is why you talked about uh the development side of it because that is what it is i don't have the the right lingo but any new projects that come up whether it's in gaming or whether it's in nfts or whatever they're all based on a, uh an infrastructure they're Absolutely. all placed on a blockchain Absolutely. which is either a fork of the original or something and then there some of the these blockchains some of these tokens and uh, utilities are faster than others and some of them lend themselves towards smart asset contracts or or nfts or different things Absolutely. so so once people uh understand that and that's what you're talking about there the reason they might get into the top 5 
uh, is because more and more uh, use cases are, are coming out from that one. Yes. So you don't need to, for example, you know, uh, the more the people hear about NFTs and they go, okay, is that on Solano or is that on? It's like, it's, I'm, I'm now rambling, but it's like back in the day when e-commerce was big. It was like, well, what's going to be bigger, eBay or Amazon? Absolutely. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. This is, this, is yeah. this is the same thing, but I think uh, every project have its own market and uh, region. Yeah. So that's, that's the beauty. Yeah. And uh, Gigi, what about uh, commissions? Like we hear in, uh, you know, a lot of this is to do with speed of transaction, but it's also to do with, well, what's the cheaper exchange to work on? So how do you, what are your fee structure like? I, uh, so basically, we have a standard fee structure on, on the perpetual futures, we don't charge it's zero commission fees. On uh, the futures, on, on the spot exchange, we have 0 0.1, it's ranging from 0 0.05 to 0 0.1. So you have a percentage, you don't yeah, have yeah. A, a flat dollar Absolute. fee. Okay. We don't have a flat dollar fee. So we will be coming out with the flat dollar fee wherein we will do as per the volumes you do. Yeah. So it's it, there are different plans which will be coming. We just went live with our MVP recently. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the the overall response from the users have been great because of the because the platform is secured it's insured we have one of the largest custodians and all that stuff. okay interesting uh and then the the fees on the blockchain side is that the same uh, on the crypto so on the crypto there are different different uh, blockchain like ethereum uh, it has the maximum usability but the fees is too high right now i think it's a post ethereum 2.0 coming which is under development then the fees will go down, but Ether is a little bit on the higher side. Where the, you... the price of the, but, but in terms of your platform to trade, uh, is it expensive to trade on your platform? No, it doesn't depend. It's a centralized exchange. So yeah. on the centralized, when you move out your assets from one wallet to another wallet, that's where, where you, you have a fees. standard fees, yeah. which is the protocol fees of the blockchain you are transferring. So for example, you're transferring Ethereum. So at that time, whatever will be the fees of the protocol, that's that's what we charge. Okay, fair enough. Okay, okay, I get you. And it's higher now because... Absolutely, yeah. it, it varies from different locations. When the volume is too high, at that time, the fees becomes a little bit higher. Okay, um, so two questions. One, one around competition. Uh, there's, you know, fintech in general in the UAE, we've talked a lot about crypto, but there's a lot of movement in the fintech Absolutely. space. There's a lot of new sort of investment platforms coming up they're adding new things all the time how do you view that do you see them as competitors uh do you think that's an interesting space to watch i think it's very important in any industry to have a healthy competition and, and anybody every product is different we are working on a cross asset somebody is working on a different product mm. but uh, it's a healthy competition and it's needed you don't have you don't have to monopolize the industry if you have competition, that's where your performance comes in. So it's, yeah. it's very healthy to a have healthy ecosystem. Healthy ecosystem. But so some of the ones I'm thinking of, like Sarwa, uh, Baraka, and these ones, they Sarwa added something this week. Like and then and then on the crypto side, you have Bit Oasis, who's kind of had a bit of a renaissance, and and Rain, and you know originally they were wallets, and now they're adding more. They are, they are based. They are regulated from here. And I think they have the maximum users from UA who are trading because they are licensed from, I think, ADGM. Yeah. Yes. But uh, so I told you each and every product is different. So BitOasis has a different product line. We have a different product line altogether. Okay. But they might add things like, like they a, might everyone things. seems to say they're adding things, Absolutely. right? <laughs> like Because it evolves, doesn't it? And, yeah. And then so, so do you think it's a kind of a zero sum game? Do you expect consolidation? Is it a case of like there's a lot of new entrants into the sort of uh, fintech world right now in terms of investment? So uh, I'll just compare any industry. You need to compare with the peer comparison of the existing sector. So I, I see crypto along with the traditional sectors. If you see in traditional, uh, there are n number of CFD brokers available across the globe. Initially, there were a few banks who were giving the services, but then it went on increasing and large institutions came in the play. And then large corporate houses bought the licenses and they are the forex brokers right now. Mm. But still everybody have its own business because the volumes have increased and a single broker, no matter how good the product is, cannot surface that massive audience. Mm. So it's better, It'll we will see lots and lots of exchanges coming up. 
but whoever will be healthy on their security user interface trading i think they will be the market leaders okay interesting so talking a little bit more around uh regulation and you know china has banned uh crypto bitcoin mining and we had we had someone on before who whose business is, is bitcoin mining and he really explained it from a manufacturing point of view he's more concerned with how he uh how he manages how he works with the computers and the places around the world rather than the price of bitcoin so what's your sort of view on uh on mining and sustainability and where are we now in that way in that world is are there going to be changes i think 60 percent of the miners previously were in china but now they are shifting their base and or they have shifted their base and looking for different locations and uae is coming out i think big time into mining dmcc has a license which which allows you wherein you can apply over a period you get a license and you can put your own mining operations based on different uh you can put it on solar, you can put it on a hydro project, or you can get a uh, subsidized rates on electricity. So that depends on which location you are putting the mining operations. But yes, they, uh, in, a, in a blockchain, you need mining, uh, wherein uh, the miners who mine the tokens, they are the one who get the protocol fees. Mm. So this industry is about to grow at a next level, and we see lots and lots of mining companies will be set up in UAE also over a oh, period wow. of time. Yeah. Oh, because I didn't know that. I didn't know that that wasn't what came up before. But that's really interesting because that's you know to do with energy as well, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but do you think it, this you know th- there's incentives for different types of energy? But do you think that mining will become more sustainable? Absolutely. There are lots of countries like Canada, Norway, Uzbekistan, and all which are giving subsidized rates on data center and mining. And mm. I think UAE is also on the same line. They want more and more mining companies to come. Okay. And they, I think, uh, there will be, we, I see in coming two years, there will be a number of large mining companies which will be setting up their base in UAE. Okay, fascinating. Um, so, kind of moving on to sort of brand and marketing and perception of uh bitcoin and trading you know obviously when there's something new people say it's a fad it's not going to last people say it's uh you know it's used for uh things that aren't uh legit right Absolutely. and there's a lot of fraud and there's a lot of sort of things like that what, what how do you do you think that uh crypto has a, a an image problem it had an image problem previously, yes, I agree that, but there are lots of companies which have came to tackle these problems. Today, blockchain is never hidden from anyone. You can do your chain analysis on the blockchain. For example, there was one Bitcoin which was minted 10 years back and it, ha- it has changed hands from one hand to uh, the last transaction is to the 90th percent. So you can track that whole chain on blockchain and there are n number of companies across the globe who are doing the chain analysis. So. We have one company which is from US uh, who is at the back end doing the chain analysis for us. So if we receive any Bitcoin from the user, so that's why I, I tell all my friends and users to, to basically go with the exchange which has a chain analysis. When you have your Bitcoin on your wallet, on your personalized wallet, which is not having a chain analysis at the back end, you don't know from where you are receiving it. Hmm. But when you are on an exchange which has a platform which can do chain analysis for you and if you are getting bitcoin you will come to know that is it legit or it is marked somewhere because there are lots of addresses which are marked with fbi interpol and all which were not which were hacked or used in a different uh, manner oh, so okay. it's very important to go with the platform where you onboard do they have a chain analysis or no oh wow yes. so chain analysis is the equivalent of uh, you know, the record of seeing if your car has been, uh, what's the word? What, what do you do when your car? You, what registered you, or not. Yeah, registered, but also what, if you, if you um, what do you do when you take it in every 10,000 kilometers and it has a history and some of them aren't, okay. I've, I've, They're I've the lost. stolen one. What? Service? Yeah, service. Yeah, there's a service history. Service history, history absolutely. Yeah, so service history to your car, it's the same way. Because when you were talking about chain analysis, I was thinking, well, is it going to show my name? But no, the most important part is that 
it's a verified history absolutely. it hasn't been associated with a dodgy exchange absolutely. or whatever absolutely. okay so that's the purpose of chain that analysis. is the purpose of chain analysis yeah so that's what we are taking care of today yeah that whenever a user is receiving any asset on our platform at least he'll be secured that the assets are are cleared yeah, by clean. the different yeah. agencies and they are clean yeah interesting fascinating so so um we talked a lot about uh where you will be around the world and that you'll follow the sort of regulation and crypto and we talked a lot about the uae but what about this region what about saudi arabia what about gcc levant north africa what what trends are you seeing in crypto there as well i think uh, and, tr- and fintech in general absolutely so i think the first one in middle east was bahrain which came out with the crypto regulations and there were few exchanges registered over there Saudi, I don't know, but they, even they are planning to set up the whole blockchain industry in in uh, Neom City, which they are developing, and at the different free zone. Uh, but I think personally that in coming five years, at the pace what UAE is going, they will be the market leaders in Middle East in terms of blockchain projects mm. and exchanges getting registered in different kinds of tokens with the regulations okay. in place uh, and and the ease of doing business. It's not about uh, the country which has the regulation it's about uh, ease of doing business in terms in which country you are what regulations they have what is the infrastructure you have uh, if you are regulated by the country where you have an office it's it's much better but uh, if i have uh, a regulations from a south african uh, country and i am not available there but uh, my whole team sits here that's not uh, the ease of doing business so it's very important for any country to give you the regulations which are uh, user friendly along with that you need to have the infrastructure also to set up your team and all so i think yeah. we will be the market leader in coming 5 years but along with that there will be n number of countries which will coming out with their own regulations okay so market leader so basically that might mean that one of the leading cities in the world for blockchain and crypto absolutely put that in another context do you think that that could mean that dubai can be a leading financial capital because if we're saying that crypto and if we're saying that the, the assets and the trading volume and the number of people trading is you say this three trillion dollars now versus 300 trillion or whatever um if if that gap is getting closer is this potentially a, a bullish case for dubai's chance to be treated like new york london hong kong as a financial capital Look at the use case. If I see the use cases, I have Zug uh, Crypto Valley, which is in Switzerland. So over the past seven years, it started in 2013 and it has seen roughly 2,000 or 2,200 companies getting registered in the last seven years with the licensing. Uh, in the last three months, uh, I am I'm one of the investors in uh, CBVC Labs, which is setting up the DMCC. crypto laws in DMCC. And looking at the figures right now with the companies from across the globe who have filed for the licenses, which is at much better Bastard. pace as compared to Zug, which was the market leader till now. So that's why I see looking at the math, uh, I think there might be a massive inroad in this country for the blockchain projects. Uh, understood. I, I get that point, And that will put Dubai ahead yeah. of Zug or previous. But what I'm asking is... How does that relate to the financial world? Like, does that okay? It might be the best in crypto, but crypto in five years' time might be more accepted and might be more mainstream financial. Mm. It already is accepted, but uh, does that mean that Dubai can be a financial capital in many ways that you know many people would have hoped that it could have been? And rather than looking at sort of we need a, we need liquidity in the financial markets and we need maybe consolidation across the region. Uh, to make to buy a financial capital more so we should be looking at the crypto world so uh, today if you see uh, if I if I see the regulations of uh, different classes uh, in US and UK we have DIFC which comes in the international law and whichever companies are getting registered in DIFC they are regulated by by the international law and now if they are also coming out with the cryptocurrency there will be n number of global companies which will come and set up their shops in DF- DIFC wherein they get a single license of trading into different assets and cryptocurrency all together in mm. one single license mm. so that's what important is same with DIFC they have uh, DMCC they have their own crypto regulations in sync SK is coming out with different regulations on 
trading traditional assets mm. so that's what i see in last six months there are n number of announcement which are made by the government mm. on the changes of law which will be more of user friendly mm. okay what are the la- what are the last five uh, crypto assets that you invested in personally uh so i have invested i told you that uh, i i, I can't <laughs> I know your strategy on, you can't uh, advise i thought yeah, i'd i ask. have an sip that's what i told you normally yeah. i do an sip where i invest a part of what my, does a sip mean so it's a systematic investment plan i yeah. i have set a amount in every month no matter what the price is i don't see and i invest it okay on the top 5 yeah so that's what i follow normally i am not a trader uh, yeah. by myself i don't trade anymore because yeah. my focus is on my exchange yeah but uh, there are an up uh, for any users i personally feel it's better to study that what will be the usability and the utility of the token in whichever they are okay. investing Perfect. apart from that who's the team who's backing the project yeah so that's very important is amazing well thank you for sharing all that thank this morning g2 we really follow difx when it uh, continues to grow thank you. and it's great insight into the crypto world thank you thanks a lot thank you very much Guys, I'm Richard.